Kid Mila Falcha, how you all doing? Now, Devstream 103 was last night, the final one of 2017, and in it, we got some nice little teasers of what to expect before the end of the year, which is next week, by the way. So, fingers crossed, everything that we got to see maybe goes live next week or maybe a few days after, hopefully before the end of the year, anyway. Now, we got a more in-depth look at our new crazy cat lady, BDSM frame, Cora, who can change between puncture, impact, and, of course, slash damage types which means we're all going to be running with slash right that is until they rework the ips damage types like they've also mentioned i think on the stream now cora's appearance changes as well depending on her damage type so she grows spikes on her shoulders for puncture blades for slash and so on her metal cat's tail also changes depending on the damage type of cora so you get a bladed tail for slash you get a hammer for impact and of course you get a spiky ball for puncture damage now this time around we got to see a little bit of cora's abilities in action we got to see her whip ability and of course her stun ability as well and of course the fact that she can change damage types on the fly but we didn't get to see her ultimate ability in action which i'm guessing is an exalted whip or hoping that it's an exalted whip her stun ability looks like it has a nice amount of crowd control and scott i think mentioned how it draws other enemies into it so maybe something similar to Inneros's ultimate ability when enemies get close to it they kind of get sucked in and end up getting crowd controlled as well now, this stun could be one of those abilities that players mod their Cora solely around, like just having her as a crowd control frame, because crowd control is always welcome, I guess, in later game or in early game as well. With the impact damage type, now her whip had some serious ragdolling to it. I think at one stage, Rebecca sent a grenier unit out into space, and it looks like a decent ability as well, but her metal cavat, her metal kitty called Venari, can be modded separately to your normal cavats. You can then mark enemies and force that metal cavat to attack them and hopefully kill them, which against heavy units or even bosses could be very, very useful. The fact that we can mod this metal cavat like a normal cavat means that maybe running Cora as a slash frame and having Hunter mods equipped could make this kitty deal a lot of damage and be a bit of a killing machine. However, I'd imagine we will need two sets of mods if you want to run with two different kitties because mods probably aren't shareable between two different companions. Now, her metal cavat has got a base duration of 30 seconds, so with duration mods, she can be kept out for a pretty long time, I'd imagine, but should it have duration if it has a health bar as well or maybe you think that it should be an energy drain ability instead let me know in the comment section below i've seen a few people suggesting either or and i think rebecca also mentioned that the whip ability wasn't fully modded so you couldn't really get a good grasp as to what kind of damage it could actually deal so cora will hopefully be this year and the fact that she can change damage types on the fly kind of gives me a little bit and i mean a little bit of hope towards the kind of rework that chroma might get remove his first ability and allow us to switch elements with it instead kind of like Voban does and like Cora will now as well and I guess Ivara with her quiver at the same time maybe we could have the perfect dragon frame or maybe they'll fuck it up I guess we'll know in time now there was also a grenier uzi or submachine gun being shown off during the ghoul bounty that rebecca was running and we know that its parts did show up in the rewards table for that new grenier ghoul bounties as something that you could possibly get your hands on as well as the return of some of the hunter mods from the hunter mod set from the plague star event so you can get your hands on any of these hunter mods that maybe you missed during the event now the ghoul bounties will keep popping up and won't be a one-time event only and they do look a little bit hectic finding a grenier your ghoul pack leader and searching graveyards and so on and basically just killing everything in sight it will be a welcome change to our current bounties that we run right now the last door on our orbiter has finally opened and we got to see what was in the new room in that orbiter the final door you know the one opposite the infested room and it turns out that it's our tenno lounge or chill out room or tenno crib where you can show off noggles have your favorite loadout on display hanging on the wall your favorite warframe have fish tanks full of nogs or whatever fish you want but nogs honestly are the prettiest the massive display in the center can have a huge fish tank or an ecosystem or with tenno action figures on it as well on display fighting or hugging or whatever the fuck they're going to be doing there's a couch for us to sit on a jukebox that you can scan certain tile sets in order to get the music required to actually play that jukebox shelves for thousands of noggles and of course a window facing out into space for you to contemplate what the fuck you're doing standing in this room when you should be out saving the galaxy for credits now there was a glowing pedestal in the room that steve accidentally showed off 
that Rebecca, I believe, tried to hide while she was showcasing the room. And I'm sure that that orb will have some kind of relevance towards an incoming update. Now, we also got to see not one, but two new Eidolons spawning in beside our current Terrorist. And this gave us a good idea as to the sizes of the two new Eidolons. And they are feckin' huge. Now, we don't know how to spawn them in yet, but we will be able to spawn in a new Megalist and a new Rainalist by doing something special. We don't know what this is yet. And only one Eidolon can be active at any given time, but you might be able to kill more than one of these Eidolons throughout a given night cycle. One of these new Eidolons looked like it had its own kind of weather system around it. There was lightning arcing off it and smashing into the ground beside Rebecca as she was running with Korra. And she was taking a lot of damage from it as well. So this fight against that huge one could be absolutely crazy. Now we got to see the custom obstacle course creator in action as well, where you're gonna be able to create your own huge custom obstacle course for your clan, basically starting off with an empty room and sticking anything into it that you want in order to terrify the absolute crap out of your clan mates we got to see the new melee fan weapon so hopefully we'll have it before the end of the year as well maybe along with the shotgun and Korra at the same time we got to see the fact that you're going to be able to jump onto a friend's orbiter and see their fashion sense compared to yours so that's pretty much the dev stream 103 in a nutshell i will leave a link to the stream in this video's description and you can jump over and check it all out if you want to sit through that hour and however long it was let me know what you think of everything that was shown off Korra and her abilities or what you're hoping for in regards her ultimate ability do me a huge favor and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or don't if you didn't subscribe for more warframe and as always thanks very much for watching